Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Jojo and I am here doing the review for Love and Marriage Huntsville. This is the season finale. Now I just read over my notes, but a lot went on this episode. So you will see me glance down at my notes several times. For all of you who are new subscribers and don't know about my computer issues, the program that I normally use to edit, normally my videos are edited. Um, the program that I normally use to edit disappeared off of my computer and I haven't been able to get it back on. I ordered some software to try to get it back on and it hasn't come in yet. So I just want to let you guys know I normally edit my videos. They're not even normally as long as they have been and you normally don't see me, you know, my bloopers and me looking at my notes. But gotta look at it for now. Yes, this y'all know when I wear this, this is a work outfit. I've been to work um, today and been there since five o'clock. So whenever you see the Nike sweatshirt, just know that it's been a work day. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Didn't want y'all think I was just wearing the same thing two days in a row because I don't live that kind of life. All right. So I want to go ahead and start with the Scots. Let's get the Scots because, you know, we got to save the best for last. And I know y'all know who I'm talking about. So we start out with Tisha and Marcel. Now Tisha got the job with the brokerage company, which was a surprise to me. Granted how that, you know, how that interview was going, but good for her. Okay, she's going to be able to get employed with them. And on top of the employment, the lady lets her know that she knows a man who's trying to build some hotels out in somewhere in Alabama. And he was using a guy from Nashville. And she told him, why use a guy from Nashville when you can use somebody local? I, I know somebody who does building. And this is, a, I want to say, a $6 million hotel. So Tisha's excited. She's definitely going to present it to Marceau uh, and Schultz industries okay that's the name of their company so she gets her husband together you know they go to a nice lunch because now she got to talk to him about how she done arranged it to where she gonna be working because i didn't mention she done arranged everything so she's sitting there marcel is already giving her the eye and she's telling him you know i want you to see me as somebody who works you know don't look at me as your wife don't look at me as you know my boss look at me as Someone who, <laughs> I already quit doing that. Somebody who could contribute. And just to show you how big my contribution is, not only did I get the job, but I've gotten us this deal that she wants to offer us, this hotel. And, of course, you still have to win the bid on it, but this is a really big deal. So now, oh, y'all, the game done changed, okay? Now that Marceau understands that Tisha can work, Tisha can bring some money in. He wasn't getting the hotel deals. So now he's just kind of like, okay and in the confessionals i was laughing because it was so hard for him to say that tisha does bring something to the table as a as a working woman he just hoped that he not gonna be the one at home with the kids because raising kids is hard and i'm glad you understand that marcel that was our frustration with you we had a feeling that you were trying to suggest that she should be happy that she is at home with her kids all the time and not out here trying to get it out the mud y'all can y'all tell i like that phrase like you gotta do but you you i felt like the well, well first let me just say that when they started talking about what they were gonna do and marcel gave her that you know i was wrong but i don't want to admit i was wrong kissed i actually was happy for them they're not my favorite couple but i was happy for them because it's always good when you can see um, you can see that light at the end of the tunnel. Everything that you thought was going to be wrong, it actually turned out okay. And your wife really does know what she's doing. And she really can. Y'all can make these moves. He kept saying, oh my gosh, like I can't believe that we about to be this couple. But there's nothing wrong with it. It's okay if everything that you set up in your head didn't turn out exactly, you know, this type of family that you felt like it had to be. It could be different. And Tisha's showing that. And I guess Marceau is thinking like, one, he going to have to hear it forever. And he hopes that it doesn't do anything with the family dynamic. But I don't think it will. And I was happy to see them have that moment. I really was. Um, my, my thing with Marceau and what made him unlikable in the beginning. I'm not saying I like him. Look, somebody probably like, oh, in the beginning. But... I felt like Marcel did not under... I hate when these uh, wireless pop-ups come on my screen. Um, I felt like there was a respect issue. And even if you like Marcel and Tisha, even if they're your number one couple, I think we can all say that Marcel had a little bit of a respect issue. It wasn't like my wife is so, 
great at these other things, but I really want to take care of my family and want her to be a mom and raise the kids. And then I want her to come out to these other things. It was kind of like, eh, stay over here, stay in your lane, you know, do the little stuff. You, you can't come out here with the big dogs. That's kind of how I felt. But to see that she can be a contributor in such a great way that can really build their family even more is great. Happy for them. We move on and we see Marceau putting together this home that they're going to, you know, fix up and make wheelchair accessible for their mom who is in a wheelchair. She's going to be moving closer to them. And um, Maurice comes in and they have a conversation and baby, hey, hey, when I tell you I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready at all, y'all, for the tears that tried to sting through my eyes when Maurice heard that Marcel was going to be building this hotel. You know, well, he got to win the bid, but he's going to be building, he's going to win it. He's going to be building these hotels. Maurice was so emotional, like, I'm so proud of you, bro. We came a long way to see my baby brother doing this. We forgot Marcel was the youngest, didn't we? Um, I'm so proud of him and he's giving him a hug. It was emotional. I wasn't ready uh, for, for that scene. I was just happy for the Scots in general, everybody, because, you know, Maurice could have hated. Family will hate too sometimes. And to see him be so moved by the big things that were happening for his brother, man, it was just beautiful. Now he's about to be an attorney. I didn't know that he must be going to school, but you know, he didn't, I just like that he made it about him and let him know how proud he was of him. Not like, well, me, when me and Kimmy get our business together, you know, we going to be, that's not, it, he made sure that it wasn't his moment. It was his brother's moment. And I love that. I love people like that. So when they got outside, <clears throat> they're talking about um, the situation with Maurice wanting to move his child in. I didn't like what Marcel, I didn't like the way he was going about it. I got what he was saying. You don't want your ex in the same room with your new wife when you divorced the ex and then you lost his weight and now you live in this fabulous life with your new woman she he's trying to make it seem like she's going to be bitter and maybe she does have some bitterness maybe we don't know that but maybe she does but kimmy and this woman do need to sit down because i y'all know i don't have no kids new subscribers this car seat needs to be shipped to my niece but i'm a slack auntie and i haven't shipped it off <laughs> That's what the car seat's about. So I don't have any kids. But I want to, I feel like, um, even when I've dated people with children, I feel like I should know the mom enough that the mom feels comfortable with your child being with me. Because if you got to run out or you're not home for days, they have to know that your child is in good hands and with a person that's got some good sense. So once things start to get to a serious point and they're married, so it's pretty serious. Yes, we need to talk. This person is going to be living in the home with my child. Absolutely. I, I don't see a problem with that. I got what Marcel was trying to say, but these ain't no big and head women, you know, young girls, um, baby mama drama. They they grown. This is marriages. We, we passed all that. So hopefully they can sit down and have a conversation. And I did agree with Maurice. There's certain things that men do instill into men. Even if you are a bomb mother, you can raise a great son. I, I got a cousin that's awesome. Mom did all the work. But it's still nothing like having the right father figure to instill certain things. And it's rough. It's rough trying to teach a boy how to, how to be manly. You know, it's it's real it's real rough because sometimes you you try to overcompensate and then you know he might end up hating women. You know, it's all about balance. And a dad brings that balance. That's why they call it parenting. But anyway, great scenes with them. We move on and they're talking about Martel. I don't even want to get too heavy into that because I don't like when they start talking about Martel Martel and Melody's marriage in like a a messy, you know, uh Eh, kind of way but then when they get with them like oh just let us know what we can do just let us know no no nah, nah. hey choose a side now <laughs> you ain't gonna be trying to be messy and caring at the same time but i don't know i felt like when they even when they were talking about it, it it sounded like a forced conversation that they needed to get on camera so i ain't even gonna get into that too much okay so now let's move on to the hopes okay um melody Melody goes to meet with another couple, and I think I got the name, Project XYZ. I guess they are another type of building company. She's going to meet with them to discuss the comeback project, since y'all know she excommunicated herself from that. 
So she's presenting the layout to them. These are friends of hers. Um, she's telling the viewers that she doesn't know who's supposed to be in her life anymore. So now she is on that mission to find out who's going to stay and who's going to go. All right. So she's talking to this new group. And when she's talking to the group, she's saying that she was with another group doing this work, but they don't seem to be interested in moving forward. And so Kim, okay, I guess all Kimmy's, Kim's and Kimmy's role the same because Kim from Project XYZ was like, hold on now. Have you talked to this other group? Are they willing to be bought out? Do they know that you're speaking with us? Do they know that you plan on moving on without them? She was asking all the right questions. And Melody, now girl, I don't know what you was thinking about, but you can't you can't just go present a deal to some people when you have unfinished business with the other people. So I'm not really sure what Mel was doing, but Kim wasn't having it. Okay, I don't the, the man wasn't asking too many questions, but Kim was just like, okay, so when are you gonna know about that? Handle that, and then we can talk about this. My girl, <laughs> I like Kim's. So, speaking of Kim's, we move on to Kimmy, okay? Kimmy is on a mission to get the comeback group in a meeting. And I was just like, oh, Lord, not, not a meeting. Not another comeback group meeting, but they do need to have one. She feels like they started this together. They have a mission. They have a plan. I'm from an area like a North Huntsville. I'm from Baltimore. And when you're living in your neighborhood and you don't see better, you honestly don't know is, if there is better out there, which is true. Y'all remember The Wire? Them kids had never been over like a certain city limit or a certain bridge. I couldn't even finish The Wire because I was crying all the time just thinking about kids who had to grow up like that and i couldn't even I don't tell me what happened i don't care i don't ever want to know i already done made up in my mind what happened to the kids and they all did well even though i know that wasn't true i fell in love with little dookie i i can't watch the wire you guys i can't it's a lot of shows that i never finished because i i'm telling you i get real passionate <laughs> about some good writing but i got off subject we're trying to do this because we've come from underprivileged areas and we're trying to offer something to the low income community because everybody should be able to live a good life. You're right. I love that way of thinking. That's great. And the comeback group needs to continue with her thing. So she's talking to Maurice about it. And Maurice is like, well, I mean, see what you can do. I'm with you. I'm, you know, babe, I, I agree with you. Let's see if we can get everybody back together. Now, while Kimmy is planning a a whole get back together moment and melody is trying to start comeback group business with a business that's not the comeback group martell is at his mama house and y'all i had so many problems with this scene first of all you know the mama still the bangs are still feathered okay that's the first thing but when martell gets in the house he's limping he finds out he's gonna have to have surgery um, probably gonna be down for about three weeks gonna get everything worked on and the mama is just like well you know this is always available to you and see when she said that okay that was my first thing i was just like so is she already suggesting that she's going to take care of him and he was just like no mama i don't need you to take care of me i just need you to stop by because he kind of worded it like i'm gonna need your help okay so then she make him something to eat. She was like, yeah, I'm going to make you something. You know, I got something good. And they start talking about Melody. Melody came by the air. She was really emotional. She was talking to me about you and how she just really didn't know about the relationship anymore and didn't know what she was going to do, the infidelity. He, she was hurt. And he was like, yeah, but you gave us some advice, right? You told her to stay with me. Let's all breathe out, shall we? See, th this is my problem here, Okay. Martell's mama, when when she talked to Melody, number one, she was she wasn't helpful. Okay, we I think we can all agree she wasn't all that helpful. And when she sat there in front of Martell, she at first I thought she was about to tell the truth on it because she was like, "Hey, I told my daughter-in-law do what's best for her. If she need to leave you, then that's what she got to do." And he looked shocked by that statement. But then, then she goes and says, and this is I think what James and Alex would call backpedaling and pussy popping <laughs> she goes and she says well um you know you a good man you a good looking man and it's been folks around here to do way worse you know y'all got a family together y'all got something good together y'all need to stay together that's kind of how i feel but she got to make her own decision but you know you know it's been people out there to do way worse and see this kind of thinking right here this type of generational 
terrible pathology type thinking right here is why Martell is having some of the problems that he's having. As his mother, I don't expect you, like I almost expect mothers to kind of coddle their sons a little bit. I do. But you are a woman still and you know what heartbreak feels like. You know what infidelity feels like. This this way of thinking, this old school way of thinking, as long as I got a piece of man and he coming home to me and he's a good father, that's enough. And I, I, I'm almost glad when Melody says stuff like, that's not enough for me. Okay, just because you're doing 50% of what you should do does not mean, and the community is only doing 25, does not mean that your 50% is all you need. Everybody, Lord, I'm running, <laughs> trying to make 100 because 99 and a half just will not do. I forgot who sung that song. But y'all get what I'm saying? Like, nobody's going to let me slack if I had a child Nobody's going to let me be slack and be like, well, there's a whole bunch of mamas out here that don't do for their kids. So, you know, if I'm at least, you know, showing up halfway, it's not a big deal. Ain't nobody going to let me slide on that. Ain't nobody going to let me slide on that. If I'm in a marriage and I'm only paying attention to the kids and I'm not paying attention to my husband, you know, ain't nobody going to let me slide on that. Okay, 50% is not going to be enough. And I think Martell's mom has created an environment where she's made Martell believe you you are so good in so many ways that anybody should be happy to have you. And your flaws are not really that big of a deal. And, and, and you really don't have to even worry about fixing those because everybody make mistakes and you're not perfect. But you real good at this right here and you real good at that. Like, And I hate when people say I'm not perfect. Nobody's asking you to be perfect. We're asking you to be a decent human being. And a decent human being communicates with their wife. Let's their wife know that they're having some problems. Doesn't go out and have a full-blown girlfriend for years. And then act like it's no big deal. That's what we're asking you to do. So that mama, she was rubbing me all kind of wrong. And we can see why Martell, yeah, I don't know. Like she just really, really made him feel like some of that stuff was okay. Then she, he, she convinces him to go and watch their wedding video. Now their wedding video, video was cute. You know, Mel had the chipmunk cheeks, you know, the full face. And Martell's hairline was all the way back here. <laughs> And uh, the teeth wasn't all the way right, but hey, that's all right. That was love right there. And they asked Martell in the confessionals his definition of marriage. And you guys, when I tell you, I ain't never heard nobody have a harder time and stammering. And let me see if I got it here. He believes that marriage is a dedication to love. Um, he also believes that there are things that you have to do to satisfy your mate in any way possible and y'all i'm saying it fast because he was stuttering and sputtering and then he turns around and he's just like and even though sometimes you don't do everything right it doesn't mean you don't love the person he and then he turned and look at mail in the confessionals it don't mean i don't love you mail you know marriage is marriage is love marriage i was just like just see no no the fact that you couldn't even really, and I know some stuff you can't define when you're right on the spot, but Judge Tola would have gave you a big fat if, okay? Y'all know when you do the declaration of love at the end of divorce court, she would have told you no. Because one thing you cannot do, when somebody asks you the definition of something, they start pinpointing other problems in your relationship. That was not the time for you to try to defend yourself or tell Melody what you thought about how her face was looking. They ask you to define love, to tell what you thought about love, and you took that time to begin defending yourself. I, I mean, that spoke volumes. It, it, it didn't speak to y'all. It spoke to me. It spoke to me. Okay. So let's get to the comeback group meeting. Melody goes to meet with the comeback group because Kimmy has called that meeting. They outside. I don't know why they insist on wearing these heels outside. Tisha, I think Kimmy had on some too. She wanted to show them what they had started. And she believes that they should continue. And it's only right if they continue together. So Mel, please stay. Thank you, Kimmy. You should have did it last meeting. But thank you for being big enough to say, let's find solutions and not continue to create more problems. They're going to need another meeting after this. But... uh. 
Melody, she's okay with it. You know, she's listening to Kimmy and Kimmy gives her a hug and I could tell she was getting emotional, but just because of everything she's going through. And um, she tells them, I'm willing to stay on. I want to stay on and do this with y'all. But I think that everybody should stay in their lane. Now, listen, I, they took it fine. But I'm going to tell Melody and Martell, y'all going to have to learn y'all about y'all word choices. Because some of the stuff that y'all say, depending on what type of person you are, you could take offense. But I understood what she meant. Like, and she explained herself after she said it in good because she was like credit repair your thing maurice real estate investors you know kimmy tisha marcel with your contract and experience like everybody the purpose of the group is for everybody to put their individual talents together let us handle the building because that is what we do and that makes sense it does i think that melody and martel because they're so boss hog, y'all know I like to use that word, because they're used to running the show, it's very hard for them to sometimes let uh, the Scots in on the details because they don't want an argument. So I think that just being able to communicate better with one another and saying, hey, we're moving forward with this process. Uh, y'all make sure y'all come out and look. We're moving forward with this part of the building. Um, Maurice, how's the money situation looking? Kimmy, do you know any interested buyers? Like keeping everybody, everybody's hands in the pot while still maintaining control of your area of that pot or giving everybody a task or something, then that'll kind of help with all of the y'all went off and did something and didn't let me know type of situations, right? So comeback group is going to be back together. But Melody says, I'm in as an individual because I can't really say what's going to happen with Holt and Holt because I don't know if there's going to be a Holt and Holt. I don't know what's going to happen with me and Martell. I love my husband, but we're going through a lot of things right now. And I can't really say, Kimmy and Tisha, you are another pair that needs to watch your wording as well. When somebody is saying to you that they are going through something, that's not the time for your exclamations, okay? When is enough enough? And oh, things have gone, you know, from bad to worse. Girl, call me. I ain't finna do all this out here. But you know, Melody will tell her business. <laughs> and Marcel was looking at Kimmy like, no, not, not all that right now. I appreciated that Marcel stepped in and gave her a hug when she started getting emotional. It was a little strange hug, but I'm glad she did it. Kimmy and um, Melody have the weirdest relationship, but I feel like Kimmy could be the best support for Melody if Kimmy would just watch how she say stuff. Like Sometimes she'll bring up her own situation and what she would do. We don't need all of that. Just be supportive. Tisha, to me... I don't know. I don't know if she would be somebody I could really feel like Mel could lean, lean on. You know what I'm saying? But um, I don't only say that because Kimmy got good sense about her. And they have a lot of like similar personality, her and Melody. So um, Melody is just explaining when you go through infidelity, there's so much hurt. And a lot of the things that I felt like I had gotten over, I have not. And there's still so much more that I need to get over. So much more that I need to think about. And I don't think Martel cares. I don't think he's ready to do the work to keep his family. And I don't know if he's ever going to be ready. So I can't really speak on what we're going to do. All right. So Mel leaves. You know, the Scots still present her with love and support. Y'all keep that same energy. Okay. That keep the love and support energy. Don't, don't get messy. Don't get messy. Thank you. She leaves because her husband's about to have surgery. She's going to be there for Martell during the surgery. That's another thing that was weird. Why didn't the Scott brothers know that Martell was getting surgery? They just found out why they were outside. If somebody hurt themselves playing football, I'm sending a text like, bro, you all right? Calling, hey, is everything healing? Have you been to the doctor? When was this? Why Why y'all ain't know? So anyway, we get over to the hospital because we got to get prepped for surgery. We got to get ready to go, all this, that, and the third. Melody, y'all know she a stickler for timing, right? She chooses that time to let Martell know, um, I'm going to be leaving. I think we need some time apart. Things just have not been the way that I need them to be. We've been going through a lot of things. And do y'all know that Martell had the nerve to look at her and say typical married things? Typical relationship things. No, not typical relationship things, Martell. I'm just not feeling like you're hearing what I'm saying. And... 
Martel says he tired of talking about it. I don't want to talk about it no more. And see, at first I was just like, this wasn't a good time. But then I was like, you know what? It is a good time because had y'all been at home, he just would have walked off. And she tells him, you're going to be downstairs. I'm going to be upstairs. And during the three weeks, I'm going to take care of you. But after that three weeks, we need to start talking about other arrangements. And honey, that's when he had got hot. But lucky enough, the doctor had came in. And they give him his medication because they got to get ready to start the surgery. Hold on, I got to look at my notes. I forgot a part. Another thing Mel mentioned while they were doing the comeback stuff, she did mention that her confidence in Martell is broken so much because he was able to cheat while still catering to Mel, taking her out, doing stuff, laughing and talking. And so that's why she doesn't trust anything. And that makes way more sense now when she says that because it's one thing for you to notice that some things are off, but for you to not be able to notice... When are you supposed to know that things are getting better? So she needs to see something totally different. They need a therapist. There is nothing that they can do individually that is going to instill any type of trust for a relationship, in my opinion. So anyway, back to the hospital. Doctor comes in. They give him the medicine. This is when Martel chooses to begin expressing some emotion and not laughing and blowing her off. He starts expressing emotion. So she tells him, you know, you're about to go under. You're doing really good. And I can tell how much she loves him, even then when she was mad. And he's just like, um, are you going to take care of me? She was like, I'm going to take care of you, you know, for the three weeks. He was like, are you going to take care of me after that? Are you going to take care of me forever? Because I want to take care of you forever. I want to be with you. I love you. And it has nothing to do with losing um, losing my family or losing the business. I want you. You're the best thing that ever's come into my life. He's not talking this fast, y'all, because he on the medication. It kind of sounded like uh, you the best thing that ever happened to me. I, I want to. I, I want to be with you. I love you. You know, and I, I know we can work it out. I, I will cut off any communications. Because Mel asked him, well, what is it going to take? I'll cut off any communication with any woman that's not my wife. I will um build up that trust i'll do whatever i have to do to make you happy again to make you trust me again y'all now listen he had me he had me for a minute i was just like this is beautiful like i i i'm i'm feeling something in my chest i'm seeing some love and i did see some love in that scene it definitely wasn't phony and you know I was just like, well, look, look, maybe we could do this. Maybe whenever Mel and uh, Martel get back together and he get to cutting up, she need to get her a hospital connect and uh, just keep a refrigerator full of the IV drip. And when he start cutting up, just be like, come here. Let, let, let me get that vein. Let me get that vein because I already see you about to act up. So let me get that vein, get this IV drip going. And I need to hear all the loving things. <laughs> and so uh, anyway... I do think Martel meant it because y'all know that medication talk don't tell no tales. However, I don't know if he meant it because he was in a vulnerable position at the time. He felt like Mel was truly serious. And a lot of times with men, when they feel you're at that brink about to leave, they try to fix it real fast, real fast to keep you from going. And so we do have to take that into consideration. We do have to think that maybe, even though he meant what he felt about her, once he gets back on his feet, are the actions really going to be committed like he said when he was on the IV drip? What do y'all think? The last part of the episode cut off on my own demand. I don't know exactly what Mel discussed with her mom in the car, but I did hear her mom say, you saw some glimpses when you were talking to him of the old Martell, and now you're not sure what you want to do. And that, I mean, I don't know what her mom continued to say, but that brought up like exactly what I thought in, in the moment of him saying that. Like, this is the old you that I remember. You're saying all the right things, and that's warming up my heart. But now, are you going to do them? Or are, is this just a moment in time? Y'all let me know what y'all think. I really don't know what for sure I think one way or the other. I hope the hosts are able to work it out. But y'all got to take that. Therapy, he ain't say nothing about no therapy while he was on the IV drip. So if y'all ain't going to do that, I'm going to just say no. 
<laughs> y'all gotta go and talk y'all need a mediator like for real trust when martel kept saying love and i love you and i love you love is not enough i said that on my iyala review you gotta have trust you gotta have respect you gotta have honesty you gotta have communication it ain't just love 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 because if you think back in the day you used to be in all kind of puppy love but that didn't always last past third period <laughs> You can love somebody today, can't stand them tomorrow. Love feelings go up and down. But that baseline of what keeps your relationship together and working has to be right. And has to stay being worked on. And um, I hope Martel is committed to doing that. That's all I really got. Um, let me know your thoughts. I cannot believe this is this is long. I, don't, I ain't even going to be mad if y'all don't watch the whole thing. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. And I appreciate y'all. Have a good one. Bye.